The piece that I'm going to read now is something that I wrote over a period of about nine months working in one particular typesetting shop. I wanted to say a couple things about it before I read it. I wanted to try to get at how I think when I'm working. So that's a lot of what the piece is about, going in and out of how thoughts go in and out of my mind when my hands and mind are also involved in, in work at the machine. Um, there's one phrase in there where they're calling me an electronic technician that I want to explain. I am a typesetter, and one particular union that I, that I was trying to get in um, had typesetters categorized as, as people who were doing a certain kind of work, and the boss, in order to keep me from getting into the union, simply called me another name. He called me an electronic technician, and um, that's somebody who fixes machines, and I don't know how to do that. Um, a third thing about it is there's a found poem in there, which is made from, uh, you, you take lines and you, you splice them in later. And if you don't put something called a quad left return, at the end of the line, it'll spread out. And when I read the line long, that's what happened. Um, I want the poem in particular to be about the resistance of men and women, and particularly of women workers, on the job. I think too often we think of work as dreary and this and that, but it's, it's a tremendous source and place of resistance and humor. Lastly, there's, this was written at the same time as Three Mile Island, so I really feel that it talks about what Meridel was speaking about. And, um, and so there's some dream material that works in there about radiation. It's in about uh, 11 parts, and it's called Woman Sitting at the Machine, Thinking. She thinks about everything at once without making a mistake. No one has figured out yet how to keep her from doing this thinking while her hands and nerves also perform every delicate, complex function of the work. This is not automatic or deadening. Try it sometime. Make your hands move quickly on the keys, fast as you can, while you are thinking about the layers, fossils, the idea that this machine she controls is simply layers of human work hours frozen in steel, tangled in tiny circuits, blinking out through lights like hot red eyes. The noise of the machine they all sometimes wig out to, giddy, zinging through the shut-in space, blithering atoms, everyone's hands paused midair above the keys while Neil or Barbara solo, wrists telling every little thing, feet blipping along, shoulders raggly. She had always thought of money and things as solid, stopped. But seeing it as moving labor, human hours, why that means it comes back down to her hands on the keys, shoulder aching, brain pushing words through fingers through keys, trooping out crisp black ants on the galleys. Work compressed into instruments, slim computers, thin as mirrors. How could numbers multiply or disappear, squeezed in sideways like that? But they could, they did, obedient and elegant, how amazing. When she sits at the machine, rays from the cathode stream directly into her chest. When she worked as a clerk, the rays from the Xerox angled upward, striking her chin. When she waited tables, the micro oven sat at stomach level. When she types it for Safeway, dipping her hands in processor chemicals, her hands burned and peeled and her chest ached from the fumes. Well, we know who makes everything we use or can't use. As the world piles itself up on the bones and rocks of the year, so our labor gathers. While we sell ourselves in fractions, they don't want us all at once, but hour by hour, piece by piece, our hands mainly and our backs, and chunks of our brains and veiled expressions on our faces, they buy, though they can't know what actual thoughts stand behind our eyes. Then they toss the body out on the sidewalk at noon and at five. Then they spit the body out the door at 65. Each morning, fresh thermos of coffee at hand for the slowing down, shift gears, unscrew the lid of the orange thermos, pour out a whiff of home, morning paper, early light. A tangible pleasure against the unlively words. Funny, though, this set of codes slips through my hands, a loose grid of shadows with big gaps my own thoughts sneak through. Call format 05, reports, disk 2, quad left return, name of town, address, zip, quad left return, roll along, and there you are, done with this one, start the next. 
Call format 05, my day so silent yet taken up with words, floating through the currents and cords of my wrists into the screen and drifting to land, beached polywogs. All this language handled, yet the room is so silent, everyone absorbed in feeding words through the machines. Enter file, execute. Call file, Oceana, name of town, Pacifica, name of street, Arbor. Thinking about lovemaking last night, how it's another land, another set of sounds, the surface of the water submerged, then floating free, the delicate fabric of motion and touch knit with listening and humming and soaring. Never a clear separation of power because it is both our power at once. Hers to speak deep in her body and voice to her own rhythms. Mine to ride those rhythms out and my own and call them out even more. A speaking together from body to mouth to voice. Replace file Oceana, call file Island. Scroll up, scroll down. What is there to justify? The words gliding on the screen make me think of the seal at the aquarium, funny whiskers old man seal, zooming by upside down, smirking at the crowd, mocking us, and his friends, the dolphins, each sharp black and cream marking streamlined as the water. Oh, they want this over and over. M A Y space one space space 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 enough M A Y space one space space M A Y space one. Once I have typeset all the pages, I run the job out on tape and clip it to the video setter to be punched out and processed. Then I swing out the door to get another job. Down the stairs into the cramped room where Mary and Rosie and Agnes sit in the limp draft of one week fan. Must be 95 in here. Yeah, and cold in the other room. Gotta keep the computer cool, you know. Back up the stairs, steering past management, barricaded behind their big desks on the way to everything, on the way to the candy machine, on the way to the bathroom, on the way to lunch. I pretend they are invisible. I pretend they have great big elephant ears. And because they must think we are stupid in order to push us around, they become stupid. Knowing something is going on, peering around like moles for clues. How can they know the quirk of an eyebrow behind their backs? They suspect we hate them because they know what they are doing to us. But we are to them only stupid girls, or stupid blacks, or crazy Puerto Ricans, or dumb blondes. We are their allergy, their bad dreams. They need us too much, though they talk of carrying us on the payroll. We carry them like loads of dull, heavy metal, outmoded and dusty. They try to control us by building partitions and taking the faces off the phones. They talk to us slow and loud as if we don't understand. How are you today? Here's a check for you. As if it were a gift. We say that even if they stretch tape across our mouths, we could still speak to one another with our eyebrows. That mural, the women, rows of them, similar yet each unique, their hands the focus of the art, body solid, leaning forward, these women facing the screens, knowledge running through them. Language the most basic of industry, to gather our food, to record exchange, to give warning and call for help, to praise courage. It flows through our hands and into metal. They think it doesn't touch us. A typesetter changes man to person. Will they catch her? She files one job under union, another under lagoon, another under cash. What if you could send anything in and call it out again? I file jobs under words I like, red, buzz, fury. Search for tiger, execute. The words stream up the screen till tiger trips the halt. Search for seal, search for strike, search for the names of women. We could circle our words around the world like dolphins streaking through water their radar. If the screens were really in the hands of experts, us, think of it, our ideas whipping through the air, everything stored in an eye flash, our whole history ready and waiting. Two hours till lunch, one hour till lunch, 43 minutes till lunch, 13 minutes till lunch, lunch. They write you up if you're three minutes late. Three write-ups and you're out. I hurry back from lunch, shortcut through the hall to the door, locked like the face of a boss. I tug at the door, definitely locked. 
Peer in through the glass, watery and dark in there. See two men standing 25 yards in, talking, faces turned away. Thank goodness, I think they'll let me in. I knock on the glass, it's cold to my fist. Not too loud, just enough to let them know. They glance at me, then continue talking. I knock again, louder. One man looks right at me and turns his back. I am furious, let me in. And knock again, my fist white where it is clenched. Bam, bam, bam. Pause. Bam, 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 bam. They don't even look up. I knock harder and harder, the glass shaking in its frame. I imagine my hands smashing through the glass, shaking their collars, bloody but triumphant. Sleepy afternoon, halfway through typing a long page of copy, something about building specifications, lost, wandering through strange buildings, wide, deep fields at dusk, trying to find the way home. The stubble of new-cut grass prickling my bare feet, the ridged rows of the fields urging me toward the dim outline of a building. I reach the building. It is deserted, some areas fenced off. People hurry to work, not stopping to talk. A low-level murmur hovers below the surface like the slight draft that makes the hair on your arm lift. Birds clot on the aerials, and the light is sharp shadows out of whack. We notice a tightness gathering right below the hollow of the neck and growing to a deep chest pain, slow-moving and thick. We notice it the way we notice smog, waking up each morning, short breath, then headachey. The officials say nothing is wrong, any slippage is small, no measurable effects gather. None of us talk out loud about this to anyone. Now, though, crowds begin to gather, huddling together. I hurry to a circle of women where a girl dodges the grasp of cops. She is agile, darting back and forth, panting, slippery as soap, her hair damp and gleaming. They lunge, she skips, twists, then breaks from the crowd and runs. We race after her in a tumbling crowd. She is at my ear, whispering. I hurry beside her words, blurting out money, burning, tell, no, say, shout. We are afraid now, locked in this windowless building. Many of us pack together. Others guard us, though they are only soft bodies like us, some of them women, all of them in uniform. The pain is still here the way sharp heat on your back in summer insists. I am afraid and almost falter, but begin to whisper the words, which are about the phony soap they have handed us. We cup it in our hands. It smells sickly sweet. I whisper, will it wash it away? Will it? And another woman and another, and now all of us are chanting, and the ones guarding us look uncertain, scared, as if they wonder too. And we are all shouting and chanting now, fake soap, will it wash it? Will it? Won't it? Wash it away. Half-empty streets, this calm of the warehouse district. Oversized buildings like airplane hangars expect half-built skeletons of planes or ships gliding the wide rivers of the streets. Nothing bustling here, like early morning walks at home in the woods, licorice plants flourishing. The noises are big here, not the tiny, picky noises of downtown. Sign scrawls one wall, U.S. out of El Salvador, next to a shiny long car, must be the boss's Cadillac. Next to that, an old Chev, the Cadillac of onions, paint peeling, settling into its flat tire, looks tired, looks permanent. Remember that dream now, Sarah and me in a great circle of people straggling over scraped bare dirt, no green plants, and we're walking, and I realize this is a musician's union, and we are singing the Internationale in jazz rhythm. Let each stand in their place, we shall be all. The buildings around us are plastered with hundreds of red stickers that shout, strike, strike, strike. A woman begins to sing of all the people that work here, and the song is a list of their names and their deeds. This is a section that's the found poem. Line Corrections, interview with Leola S. Typesetter, Karen B. Born in Shreveport, Leola, independence is important, she. One of 14 children, her house cleaning in San Mateo. Divorced now, she lives alone in, serving dinner from 4 to 5 p.m. every starting pay 153 per hour. She and some co-workers, Today, more than ever in U.S. history, posed to discrimination by sex, race, color, religious, or national origin. More women go to work in, 
enter the labor, 70% of the average wage black women lowest paid of, to organize the continuing fight, determined to be heard, plaints against unfair policies, something worth fighting for, sector of the working class, women. This is the last section. Some buildings never sleep, round the clock, three eight-hour shifts, seven days a week. Centrifugal force irons us flat to the blank walls, speeding, whirling, intent as astronauts, eyes toward the clock, hands on the keys, shoulders pressed against the chair. Some buildings never sleep, never shut down, roaring and roaring, and we shout, what did you say, huh? What, where is the, what did you say? Continuous paper streams from the room, words rat a tat through our brains. Trains and earthquakes shudder the walls, the long whistle of wind under the door, all we know of outside. Remember that fish that lives so deep it has grown its own light? Energy glaring out the bulbs of its eyes. Remember that fish formed flat under fathoms of water? Bones streamlined as ribs of steel, precise and efficient, formed in duress, reaching, spinning the tough wire of its own life, and long before Edison, vaulting out through its own demands. <laughs>